Welcome back. Now, today is International Day to End Obstetric Fistula. The fight to end obstetric fistula, one of the most serious and tragic injuries that can occur during childbirth, a hole between the birth canal and bladder and or rectum. Um, it is caused by prolonged obstructed labor without access to timely, high quality medical treatment. Obstetric fistula is preventable. It can largely be um, avoided by delaying the age of the first pregnancy, the cessation of harmful traditional practices, and timely access to obstetric care. Unfortunately, the current pandemic affects all these preventive measures in developing countries where obstetric fistula still exists, like Nigeria, in which healthcare system, even before the coronavirus outbreak, failed to provide access or accessible quality maternal health care. Ooh. You know, I lived in the north all my life before yeah, it seems I came. To be prevalent in the north. Yeah, it's prevalent because of um, child marriage. Yes. You know, so getting married at a very young age, you you see a lot of young girls, mm -hmm. you know, very young, 12, 13, getting pregnant, you know, for their husbands an and all of that. Age. I mean, it's really, really sad. And I still remember this movie by Stephanie Nylos. Yes, I have I mean, that was it, that was the only movie I went to the cinema, Nigerian movie yeah. I went to the cinema, and I watched and yeah. I loved. Till tomorrow, I talk about the movie every day because I cried from the beginning. <laughs> to the end because of the brings movie. it to life. So it brought it brought it so much to yeah. life for me because yeah. you know my background, you know, being in the north and yeah, all of so that. Yes, so you could connect. With I a could lot of connect those strongly, and you know what really made me happy about that mm -hmm. movie? It didn't mm -hmm. stop at just the movie. Yes. Yeah. It now um, moved a lot of international bodies Absolutely. to come to Nigeria, yeah. and they started performing free surgeries. You know, wow. free surgeries to a lot of young girls. I mean, they've done so many surgeries. Mm -hmm. You know, since that time, because the awareness was, you know, was very... was, was created strongly, and, and that's, that's and where that's what we should. Yeah, I tell movie. I mean, the media. You're very powerful. Powerful. So, wield your power. Yes, and tell the right powerful. stories very and true. be impactful. Yeah. Let's not just do feel good. At the point where we are in the country, if we say we want to change the country, let yeah. us tell those stories, those stories that will bring about we'll those changes. Yeah. yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, so it's interesting that this is what um, my my new story is going to be about. Absolutely. And um, <laughs> it's just really sad that this continues to happen. It's, I, I'm a mother of two girls, and I don't even, I can't even imagine that you this can't. happens to them. But well. You can't, you can't. So tell us about your story for today. Yes, yeah, so um, it's from The Guardian, and it's about a 17-year-old girl, Salma Hassan, who allegedly stabbed her husband to death. And so the reason is that she, she, she was defending herself from the fear of him raping her. So she said she didn't understand that what he was trying to do was a marital obligation. Obviously, he must have been trying to um, force himself on her. And she um, had a knife and stabbed him in self-defense. So now she's been arrested, apparently, um, for homicide, possible homicide. And she's saying if she knew that... Um, it was something that he was supposed to do as a, mar as a marriage right, then she would not have resisted that much or done anything. But my question is, first of all, so apparently some newspapers have it that she's 18 years old and some say 17. So he's 17 too young, but I know that for Nigeria, the, mar there's a marriage, the marriage act says the legal age for getting married for boys and girls is uh, 21, except there's parental or guardian consent. And then the Child Rights Act says 18. So if she's 18, then it's almost like, you know, she's, she's of adult. age. But apart from age, education. So if she doesn't even understand what this person's about to do to her, you know, she probably doesn't. So nobody's educated her. Nobody's told her about this. And he's also not um, talking to her. He just assumes that she knows. And so it, it's a sad situation. It's very I like the disturbing. fact that you're bringing education to, you know, the table. Because if this young girl had, I mean, I mean, Nowadays, they save as as the child starts to even oh, yes. know themselves. Yes. You they teach them have... sex education. Absolutely. You know, so I don't know. We do hush hush with some of these things, and at the end of the day, it's not it's not going to benefit but anybody. Were in school. So I mean, how old did you start learning? I mean, no, she's the, 17, 18. If she yeah. were in school, she right? would have been taught so sex education. So this is not educational. Yeah. So yes, let's say the informal education bit suffered. The formal bit, if they had access to education, which is why I know that um, the former emir. 
was very, very particular about, you know, educating the girl child in the North. And it's something that they should start to really think about because they know avoid all this sort of, you know, um, um, issues and challenges that they're faced with. Well, I just hope that um, the right, um, the right justice will come. I hope so too. Yeah. Some people have said, oh, but she's too young. But, like, you know, some, age some, are, some are arguing that so, she's you know, not my, too my young. My mom got married at 18. Oh. Right? Yeah. So. so it's a sad one. Honestly, <laughs> I really can't say much about it because she's not really, really much of a minor, like, you know, people. If she was a minor now, everybody can. So, but, exactly. But let's, just, let's, let's, let's let them do the proper in investigation and Absolutely. let the. And let if justice, indeed, yes. she didn't understand. And let maybe justice be seen to be fair. Very yeah. true. I agree. All right. So, my story is quite interesting. You know, we talked about El Rufai yesterday. So, yes. Governor El Rufai declared zero um, role charges for bro broadband infrastructure in Kaduna State. Now, Sorry, zero charges for. R O W. So I'll have to get the full meaning okay. right of way. So I think it's for right. all these um, telecom companies that right. are that are laying cables, the, cables the fiber cables, fiber, and right. all of that. So the reason I, I took this story, you know, yesterday um, his cut his cut <laughs> salaries of the frontline workers. Is he was very particular about Dr. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, Rufai, but he's saying that he has waived that um, those charges for broadband and related telecoms infrastructure in his state. And he's saying that most of this thing, in a press statement by the Federal Ministry of Communication, um, the Minister for Communication, Dr. Issa Ali, uh, commended the governors for speedily implementing the resolutions with respect to the road charges. Now, you know, because right now where we are, uh, where we are in, a country, in our country right now, yeah. we need um, quality internet, internet access for a lot of things that, that is going on. Absolutely. Education, health, all the information right. and all of that. So okay. now, with these charges waived, you know, it would help so the telecom charges companies. charges are waived for, for the telecom companies. So yeah, so they are able to, you know, because we had, um, interestingly, we had brought a, a very, very um, interesting guest that talked about the 5G network. Because yes. we were saying all the possibilities of right, what the yeah. 5G network can right. do. But he said, he said, the thing is, it's just too expensive, you know, right. deploying this, this um, what's it called, um, technology mm -hmm, to, to, mm -hmm. to, to Nigeria, for instance, right. that even if at all they're going to come to Nigeria, places like maybe just Abuja, Lagos, and Port Harcourt, then we'll even in Lagos, it's going to be, it's, it's, it's going to be, it's gonna be within maybe Ikoi and it, it, Victoria it's Island, it's because, right. because it is expensive. So who are the people that will that be able to afford it, you know? So I'm, I'm really happy about this. If they can implement it, so if governors can implement this, you know, it will actually bring down, because now we are seeing that internet is, 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 a, is, is a necessity it's right an, now. It's not, a, it's not longer luxury. So it's not a luxury, it's, mm -hmm. a, it's a necessity, and people have to be informed, and people have to use internet for schools and all of that. So it would be nice. To, to Governor El Rafai, he's one of the very progressive governors, and I know that he's very passionate about um, technology and that evolution and trying to bring that to his state. So... I mean, it's just that what he did yesterday or from the news, it's a bit, it's, uh, it's not fair. It's mm. not fair. It's, it's not fair. fair. We'll, still, we'll still call him out on we that. We should. <laughs> but kudos to him for yeah, this Yeah, we'll still call him out on that. So today, we said earlier, we're talking about working from home and Bumi Wabweze will join us after the break. Please stay with us. We'll be right back.